Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. I'm glad you're here. If you have a second and you're so inclined, please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I get um, new content uploaded and when I have live streams. Today I wanted to go through my collection and all of the buttons slash plunge locks that are in my collection. And the way that I was going to do this is go through them based on cost from lowest to highest and then talk about them in terms of how they are, how they make me feel, what I do with them, which ones I like the best, which ones are kind of meh. Um, but to start off, I'll do a disclaimer that um, the raccoon, of course, has seen a lot of um, scrutiny like a lot of other button locks have for having or being prone to possible lock failure um, we'll come across a couple of knives and we'll kind of check all these on the way through our overview slash reviews of these knives in my collection um, but the raccoon the first one that we're going to start with my particular specimen locks up very very tight tightly so it does not have the lock fail that has plagued so many but that doesn't mean there's not a problem with the Vastide raccoons um, I just my particular uh, specimen does not have that problem it works great locks up great it's a fantastic knife in my opinion I'm not going to belabor a lot of time with each of these knives because I've gone through and done overviews or reviews on this one but this particular knife is uh, it is actually in 14C, 28N, and it comes in right under $60. I think it's $59. It's got really nice micarta, not too textured, but not too waxy. has a nice stainless button with a button ring. The action on it is fantastic. It's a thumb stud knife that you can reverse flick or thumb flick. Those are the only two deployment methods. Of course, you can button sling it if you want to call that a deployment method but it's got a really nice little steel clip that goes in and out of pocket very easily it's pretty deep carry you know it's about that deep not full deep the clip is actually a deep carry clip but it's not mounted to be full deep carry and it is reversible you've got the little filler tab here but that is the least expensive button lock that's still in my collection so that's something I also should have prefaced these knives are still in my collection. I've had a lot of other button locks that have come through, been catching release, or been passed on to other, other tribe members. But the Vestide um, Raccoon, I would love to say I can give this thing, if, if they were all like my specimen, I would say this is a fantastic knife. It's a, a run for, could be the budget knife of the year. Um, the problems people are experiencing with it, I couldn't or wouldn't feel comfortable saying that. But again, my specimen sounds. So that's the Vostede Raccoon. Next button lock still in my collection is the Civivi Cogent. Mine's the blacked out variant. It's, in all honesty, not a knife that I carry all that much. And it was actually one in a giveaway this weekend. And it's going to be going to a new home. The knife is light new. As a matter of fact, it is brand new. It's cut paper, and that's about it. Uh, it's very, very sharp. Has a great handle. I mean, it fits my hand, my medium to large size hand, very well. Has great jimping on the blade. Has a very nice swedge on a, this clip point blade. The sharpening choil is not that great, but you don't really expect that on a knife of this price. The button lock works fantastically well, smooth. There's no lock stick at all. The drawbacks to me on this particular knife, and these are purely subjective, is it's flipper only, or of course I can give it the button lock flip dance. It does a great push button, does a great light switch, but that's really the only actuation method. Whoops, I lied. I can get my finger in there and also middle finger flick it. So if you're a middle or reverse finger flicker the angle on this blade does allow you to get in there and middle finger flick it so the Civivi cogent is 
also 14C 28N. It comes in, I checked tonight on Amazon, it was right about $69, um, $59.99 I think. No, excuse me, $69, $68.99. Um, and this one has gone to a new home because it was given away during Friday night flicks this past weekend. But I'm really kind of stoked that I can reverse flick it, even though I'm going to let it go to a new home. That's, uh, that's cool, and hopefully the new owner will see this video and realize that it's not just a flipper knife, as I was describing it the other night. But that is number two, um, based on price, and that's the Civivi Cogent. And to me, it's just kind of meh. It's not as, I don't like it as much as I do the, um, the Raccoon, that's for sure. Now, the next knife is also by Civivi. It's a smaller knife, and it's the Civivi Altus. I really do like this knife, guys, because it's small, it's uh, got a snappy blade, snappy detent for a button lock, has a real slicey blade. I put an edge on this, and um, it, it just seems to be very, very sharp and hold an edge pretty good. Nitro V. Um, this knife comes in at $72 with a Nitro V blade and G10 handle. I think you can get the handle and a couple of other materials. But it's thumb stud knife, so you can do the reverse flick. You can do the thumb stud flick. You can do the button lock dance deployment, which I don't really consider a method of deployment, but I'm sounding like a broken record. Um, again, the Altus carries in the pocket really well. Um, the G10's got a good texture, but it's not too grippy going in and out of pocket. And it's one that I would definitely recommend to somebody, and to me is a lot less meh than the Cogent. So for a budget EDC, I guess while we're in this under $100 range, uh, we've got one more to look at, but this would definitely be right behind the Raccoon for me. Coming in, the fourth knife we're going to look at is um, in 154, 154CM. I think this knife's right around $80 after you pick it up at White Mountain Knives and use one of our brother, like Lefty Ten's code. This is a big knife. I like this knife very much. The action's fantastic. It's got both a flipper tab and a thumb stud. And what I haven't been doing, like I was going to do, is test all these. We'll go back and spine whack those other ones. But it's got very stable lockup. Thumb studs that I can reverse flick, regular flick, or that flipper tab, even though it has no jimping, which I say no jimping, it's got two jimps there. I think they missed the bar. I'll, we could have gone around that and made the jimping a lot more, um, a lot more grippable without it being uncomfortable, but you can still get it. I mean, it's it's got two little jimps, as you can see right there. Um, stop pin, I wish it was a little bit bigger, but again, the way I use my knives, guys, that stop pin for that big blade is just fine for me. Um, I can get a full four, more than four finger grip on that knife. If I wanted to choke up and use that tr kind of trigger flipper, it's not too protruding, so I can still get up to make more detail cuts with this super large knife. Um, but coming in at number four, about 80 bucks. Again, this one's in my Carta, and 154 is the Big Lighter XL. I'm not sure if this is a White Mountain exclusive, but that's where I would get it. Um, again, no button stick, no lock stick, and as we saw, it lock didn't fail. So let's try our Cogent. Solid lock up there. We didn't do the Altus, and then we'll catch the rest of these as we go through them. No locks fail there. And these are just my specimen, guys. Because these locks um, aren't failing doesn't mean that some will, or, or they all won't. But let's look at number five, which is also an $80 knife when I got it. And this is the Orion Solaris. And this is the OG Solaris. I have invested an additional $20 or $25 for these carbon fiber scales, which at the time and still to this day are a fantastic value because they're nested, the liners nest right into these carbon fiber scales, and I think it gives the knife a really good look. Um, this particular knife is in 14C 28N. 
I like it very much because it's got a tall three-quarter flat grind blade. I've sharpened it up to where, I mean, it is scary sharp. Let me grab my coupon book. I forgot it was over here. I would have grabbed it sooner, guys. And we could have cut paper to... Although that takes a little more time because we've got to clean up after ourselves. But the Orion Solaris is super slicey. It was designed um, by a member of the community. I'm not even going to try to say the name um, by memory because I'll mess it up. But if you guys, I'll put it in my description. Or when you go look at this knife, the Orion Solaris, um, you'll see the designer. It's one of uh, the YouTube guys, and he did a fantastic job. Again, this knife is made to be a slicer, but it's thick enough behind the edge to where it's a full kind of hard use knife. I can get two grips on this. The choil is very well designed. Blades very simple with no jimping. But I've got this area right here that allows me to get a full finger choil there. I can keep my hand behind the flipper tab if I want to there. And if you'll notice here, I've got eh, kind of a mass sharpening choil, but that's okay. You know, again, it's a budget knife. What do you expect? I can get very good deployment with both the flipper tab, thumb studs, traditional flip or reverse flick. So that is the Orion Solaris coming in at 80 bucks. The fifth knife we're looking at today. And the last one I think we have, no, we have one more that for me was under 100 bucks. This knife is the um, Tucson Vandal. It is a knife designed from our friend Love Them Knives. And this particular one, when I first purchased it, I want to say it was $180. Um, there were a couple of issues in shipping, and this one's M390. But Lee found out that there were a few of the knives that were still 14C28 in, and he wasn't 100% sure which ones they were. And me not being a steel nerd, he gave us a couple of choices, which is the best customer service that you could ever ask for. He said, guess what, guys? There's a small chance that your blade might not be M390. This is an email that came to me. He goes, you can do three things. What happened is a few of these got back, and they were the old uh, stock, and they have the 14C28N blades. Um, you can send your knife back. I will test it and send it back to you. You can send your knife back for a full refund. You can send your knife back for a um, replacement, or you can take the knife for half the price. So me not being a steel slob, knowing from the way I've sharpened it with about 90% certainty that this is M390, and then again, acknowledging that if it's not, I'm absolutely fine with that. I ended up picking up this knife in titanium carbon fiber, um, for 80 bucks. Now, the Vandal is a big knife, and the Vandal is one of those that suffers from lock fail. And it fails very easily, guys. So, that's not safe. I couldn't give that a passing grade, and recommend that to somebody. But what I can do is carry this knife with confidence, knowing that the way I use the knife, it's not gonna become a problem because I'm aware that it has lock fail. So the Tucson Vandal, which we'll move on from, my particular specimen, and my brother Tri-States both have lock fail. I like the knife, I like the design, I love the designer. Um, I have no problem with it. I won't use it hard. I know its limitations, and that is the Tucson TS338, excuse me, the TS329, i.e. the Vandal. Moving on, we come to probably the least inspiring button lock that I own, but it's still a button lock, so I was going to put it in this overview. Um, it is a Civivi OG button lock. I'll tell you the things I like about this knife. I won this from Lefty EDC, Brother Kevin, so it's going to kind of be one of those collection keepers because it means something to me. It's got a deep hollow grind. It's super slicey. It's got the carbon fiber handles, and I won this on uh, Over the Edge or something like that early on, so it means a lot to me. What I don't like about this knife, 
Go watch Tri-State's video. I agree with 99% of what he assessed of the Civivi. But that comes in right around $90, $100, somewhere like that. Moving on, we'll go to one of my favorite, I still consider it a value uh, button lock. It's not under $100, it's $119. But it's the Civivi, excuse me, wow, what a Freudian slip. The Kaiser, to me they're about the same company. The Kaiser uh, Cogent. Nope, that's the Civivi. This is the Kaiser Comorant. Guys, see if I was an editor, I would go back, I would cut that out. And I would put it back in, but why would I waste my time and yours? Y'all all knew this was the Kaiser Comorant when I first pulled it out. It has multiple deployment methods. It's got one of the smoothest button locks I own. Very solid. Doesn't fall into our lock fail group. I can reverse flick it, which is the only way I prefer to open knives. I've got a very low profile flipper tab there. I've got a front flipper. This little bad boy is in S35VN and G10. What I don't like about it is I think it's ugly. It looks like shit just because of the patterns, and that's just a me thing. I wish it was solid, or I wish it was anything. But, um, but I don't like it enough to buy the titanium version because I've already got this version, and it's a super good knife. I fidget with it all the time, but I don't love it enough to have two of them. Um, there are very few knives that I love enough to have two of. But what I will tell you is I do not subscribe to the school of this is an ugly knife. I think this knife is actually very attractive. I like birds. It reminds me of a bird, kind of like a pelican. So it wins for me. It's got a deep hollow grind. It's super, super slicey. S35VN for under $120. I could recommend and get behind the uh, Kaiser Comorant. So moving on from there, we come to the Tucson TS338. The Tucson 338, TS338, is when I got it right around $145. And it's in D2 steel, yes, D2 steel. I know we have some D2 steel haters out there, totally understandable, but I was 100% aware of what I was buying when I bought this knife. And I've used this knife to process tons of cardboard. I've only stropped it. I haven't put my edge on it. This is the factory Tucson edge. And it just cuts very well. Again, for my uses, what I'm gonna use the knife for, um, this 338 is, is pretty boss. I like it a lot. I like the quality of the micarta. I think it looks really, really good. Um, the D2 steel doesn't bother me because it's black washed. The thumb studs are a little big and aggressive. That kind of bothers me. The pocket clip has only a single screw, so that's something you've got to watch for, and you've always got to make sure that that's tight. Not that it comes loose. It's just one of those things I wish it had more. See, I can get a little wiggle on it now. So I tightened it down. But when I put it back in my pocket, carry it around, take it out, put it in my pocket, carry it around, take it out, put it in my pocket, carry it around, it might get loose again. So I have to check it. But again, the thumb studs are very aggressive. That's kind of a negative to me. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of these fantasy holes in the blade, but I don't know. This is a night morning design, I think. And I totally get it. It's something he wanted to do. It's his design flair. Who am I to shit on that when it's something so minor? So, you know, this is not one of my favorites. It's a great knife. It stayed in my collection. I won't get rid of it because I like the way it feels in my hand. I think it's pretty cool. And nobody's offered to trade me something that I thought was cooler than it. But that's the TS338 and D2. I picked it up on Amazon for about $145. Moving on, before all the haters come out and say, it's not a button lock, that's not a plunge lock, that's just a reverse compression lock. I know. I know. I've taken it apart. I've fucked with it. I've dealt with the nightmare of putting scales on it and getting it centered back up. But this is a Spyderco smock. It operates just like a button lock. It has a button that comes through the scale, so I call it a button lock. Even though we know it's this funky compression lock that's just 
turned around backwards and it's actuated with the button. But to me, it's a button lock. It always will be a button lock, and I like it that way. It's the Spyderco Smock, guys. It's one of my favorite knives, all knives. I love this knife. It's got a deep, deep, deep hollow grind. It is super, super slicey. It's only an S30V, nothing fancy about the steel. It's Taichung, Taiwan, where I think some of the finest, best put together spider coasts come from. It did have two detent balls. I took the second detent out so it would have that drop shut action. If I was vertical, it would have drop shut action. I'm having to give it a little risk because it's horizontal, which is making it bounce out. But I can assure you, it is very fluid. It is very drop shutty. And I love it very, very much. That's the Spyderco Smock. It's got some Raylite titanium scales, which are about 125 bucks. The knife itself is about 185 bucks. So it's getting up there, right? But that's the Spyderco Smock. I'm a big fan. I like it. Moving on, we come to a knife that I picked up over at Blade Show. Did not plan on picking it up, but I knew it was being dropped. It's the Wee Mini Malice. Um, it is a traditional flipper knife, has one of the smoothest button locks of anything I own. It's in 20 CV. I can reverse flick it on that fuller. I can use the finger, uh, thumb step, what do you call that? The uh, flipper tab to get it out, whether I light switch it, whether I push button it, or whether I reverse flick it. I don't get a good reverse flick on it there. It's a medium sized knife, small to medium. But it has a very generous finger choil, which gives you more than enough room, regardless of your hand size. I really like this little knife. It gets a ton of time in my pocket. Real tall flat grind on that 20 CV. Very slicey. It's a winner. Comes in. I got it for $250 table price at Blade Show East. It's coming up soon. Can't wait to see you guys there. Moving on. Born in the USA, we've got the ProTec Malibu. I chased this knife forever and ever, fell in love with it a long time ago, had the plain aluminum with the 20 CV blade, love it. Went to the Nashville Knife Show last year. They had this particular one, which is the textured. I was sitting there talking to David and decided it was something I had to add to my collection. It was $260. I bought it, I had two Malibus. I was happy with two Malibus, one of my regrets. I, uh, I actually put it up for sale and let it go. The good news is it went to a fantastic brother in the community who then passed it on to several other people after going through a full, pretty amazing modification where I wouldn't even recognize the knife if I didn't know it was that knife. But the Protec Malibu is as sturdy as they come. I've never had a problem with it with lockup. 20 CV. Might be a little thick behind the edge, but that's what it's designed for. Reverse Tonto, busting down doors. It's a single method of deployment only. Not really, because you can button lock flip it. I didn't flick it that time. But just one of my favorite knives, guys. I still love the Malibu. Call me a Malibu fanboy. This is the textured version. I'm in love with it. Let's move on. A fantastic pocket knife is the Max Ace Babylon. This is the version one. It is a middle finger flicker or a thumb stud knife or a button lock flicker. It's got this very aggressive either hand or machine ground blade. Machine ground I'm sure but it's super super slicey. Super nice sharp swedge here up on the top. Has great jimping. Has multiple grip placements is a bigger knife but is not too heavy it's got a lot of weight relief inside it i don't know if you can see that milling inside there but it's m390 steel it's on the bigger side it drops absolutely like a rock again i'm horizontal guys let's just tilt it at a tiny angle boom it's shut i love the noises it makes it makes fantastic noises I bought it for about $255 new. I love it. Wouldn't trade it. It'll always be with me, and that's the Max Ace Babylon. So moving on to the last one is the most recent button lock that's come to my collection. I picked this up in Nashville this year at Blade Show when I was talking to Dave again, 
and it is the Protec Mordax. It is a Mordax skies that is a flat grind, but I am convinced and have even had it confirmed that the blade stock is thinner than the blade stock that was on the drop Protec Mordax. This is just the Protec Ferrum Forge collaboration. It is got fantastic action. It's got the sculpted handle. It's in Magna Cut. It is very, very solid. Drop shut. Fits my hand perfectly. Has a very usable choke up point here. I was not thinking I was going to be this big of a fan of the knife because I'm such a lover, worshiper of the Malibu. And I thought since the Malibu was smaller, I was going to love it more. I don't. I like the Protec Malibu more, or the Protec Mordex more, but I love the Malibu too. But guys, that is the button slash plunge lock since slash one lock that is a compression lock, yes, done backwards that I put in there as a button lock and tried to pawn it off to you guys as one. And full disclosure, that's the smock. I will always call it a button lock because of that right there, the button. But I appreciate you guys coming by. I love it anytime you watch one of my videos. I love every one of you when I see you in live streams, whether I say hey back or not. I've got short-term memory loss and I get distracted real easily and a lot of times I'm doing other things. But thank you all so much. Please continue to look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for the guy or gal to your left, and look out for one another, guys. I love you all. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate over hate. That means we talk about things when we don't agree with somebody. We learn their point of view. If we don't agree with them, we can continue to disagree. But just keep the hate out of it. Peace.